The recent boom in generative AI models relies on intense computational resources built on power-hungry chips in server farms around the world. That demand could double by 2026, compounding the increasing need for electricity that's already taxing the grid. Hi everybody, I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, senior editor Alex Knapp. Alex, thanks so much for joining me. Happy to be here as always. We have been talking about generative AI for a while now, and for those who might or might not know, it relies on chips, which in turn uses a great amount of electricity. You're reporting that one startup is using AI to tap into a form of renewable energy. Can you talk to us about what this company is doing and what problem they're trying to solve? Sure. So one of the most abundant sources of renewable energy is called geothermal energy, which is literally the ability to tap into the heat that is naturally generated below the Earth's surface. And this is used in a large number of applications, but it's actually more expensive than a lot of other kinds of renewable energy. And so it accounts for less than about 1% of the total electricity generated in the United States right now. A big reason for that is that it costs a lot to explore for the right spots to dig and drill. Um, if you have a geothermal project and you manage to drill in the right spot the first time, that's still about half of the total cost of the project. So you can imagine that if you have a few misses, even one or two, you suddenly uh, massively increase the amount of money you're spending on a single geothermal power plant and that in turn makes it less you know incentivized for utilities and uh, other potential investors to go for it and so what exactly is Zanskar the startup that you are reporting on what are they trying to solve here that um, the different places that you can drill yeah that's exactly right so what Zanskar is doing is they're using geological knowledge uh, from all sorts of different sources, from satellites to actual field work that the company is doing to better identify through machine learning where is the right spot to drill for geothermal energy, where can we maximize the return and minimize the cost of digging into the ground and, and getting the electricity that we need. And so that's the problem that they think that they have a handle on solving and they just raised uh, 30 million from investors to, to solve that problem. They just raised 30 million from investors, but how um, much did, have they raised overall? Uh, they've raised 45 million overall so far, which they've used to develop their models and even get um, you know a few dozen employees out in the field to validate those models uh, by by testing the sites and making sure that the models are actually sending people to the right spot before they do any large term building. Drilling for geothermal energy without this technology, as you said, is risky. So how mm -hmm. accurate is this new AI technology? Well, it, it depends in part by uh, at the region you're talking about. So in areas where there's a lot of data, um, they've been able to, you know, flip uh, the script, as it were, and, and make it accurate somewhere in the 90 percent range, uh, according to one of their investors who talked to me. Um, in uh, other regions, it may be less accurate than that, but that's really because there's not as much data available. Uh, but even in those places, they're seeing significant increases in accuracy. And as they train their models and as they're able to gather more data in the field, I imagine those numbers uh, would hopefully go up as well. What regions can they be drilling? Where is this drilling going to be taking place? Uh, that's a great question. So um, the best places are obviously uh, near places where heat is already coming out from the Earth's surface. So uh, if you don't have a lot of data available, but you want to dig a geothermal plant, near geysers and hot springs are you know obvious places. That's, those are spots that the heat is already coming up from the Earth. Um, but really, a, a significant portions of the West, uh, along fault lines, uh, near volcanoes, uh, things of that nature, um, really uh, enable you to hone in and, and get the heat where it's closer to the Earth's surface. And is there competition in this space yet, or does Zanskar almost have the monopoly on it? Uh, no, there's definitely a, a competition in this space. We've seen a lot of investment in geothermal over the past couple of years. 
Uh, this is in large part because their startups, uh, such as Fervo, which is a, a competitor, have developed new techniques for drilling that are more cost effective and also enable geothermal drilling to happen in places where 10 years ago, uh, we didn't have the technology to exploit properly. And so with new technologies for, for drilling, um, they're uh, able to hopefully compete on that basis. Whereas Zanskar, their uh, CEO told me they believe they have the advantage is still in the exploration space and being able to identify the right spots and uh, compete that way. We have seen over the past couple of years, AI encroach into every industry, education, media, technology, everything in between. And I'm curious, what's your take on venture capitalists going into renewable energy via AI? Is this going to be something that we see more of? I definitely think you'll see more of it. So one of the things about AI, and, and particularly when you're talking about some of the newer generations of models, uh, generative AI and, and other models that rely on the transformers and that signature Google paper from 2017 is it's really important to train these models on very good and very accurate data. Um, one of the challenges you might see if you use, you know, a chatbot and I've looked up myself and my colleagues and discovered, you know, fake books, fake novels, things like that. And that's because they're trained on the internet, which is not always a reliable source of information and and they're working on different things but when you're looking at fields like energy where you can validate the results and feed the new data back into the machines and train them better we see this in biotech and healthcare um, there are numbers coming out in drug discovery that using machine learning and drug discovery uh, has improved the ability of um, pharmaceutical companies to go through early stage uh, drug testing in the clinic um, and also in areas like engineering um, and even engineering solar cells. Uh, AI is used to develop new ways to engineer solar cells so that they're more efficient. I think the key for making AI work is the ability to quickly validate the models and retrain them with the new information that you're verifying in the real world. And where I think AI is challenging is when you don't get that immediate validation, when you're not weeding out the bad data and and not keeping your models trained uh, and, and constantly improving. As you know, there have been many conversations about AI, the pros and the cons. You listed some cons, some misinformation, some bad data. Mm -hmm. Also people saying, hey, is this going to steal my job? Do you think AI being used in this way in the renewable energy space, do you think this largely goes in the pros column? I would definitely say it largely goes in the pros column. I mean, whose job are you stealing? This is a, an area where less than 1% of electricity is generated already. Uh, any new fields you're discovering, and if you're able to make them more cheaply, you're only bolstering the industry as a whole. I mean, the company is raising money and hiring right now. And I think, you know, as with any new technology, uh, some people are going to lose jobs. There are going to be new jobs that are created. Uh, the, really, I think, as a society, we just have to make sure that these technologies are being employed to good purposes and we're doing the right thing. And for those who need to transition, that they get the support they need to transition to new fields. You mentioned at the beginning of the conversation that geothermal energy is so expensive because of the drilling process and, even, right. and it's so tough to find at that exact point. Can you quantify mm -hmm. how much AI is going to save uh, money-wise in this space? Uh, it's difficult to quantify right now without, you know, the, the plants with this technology starting to get built, um, which is still a, a couple of years off. Uh, but if you look at it this way, you know, on average, it takes, you know, two to three tries to find the right spot. And that and just the first drilling alone, if you only drill once, that's half the cost of the project. So if you're able to get one drill rather than three drills, you've immediately half the cost of a thermal a geothermal plant. And is there any indication, I know, as you said, that we're in the early stages now of what's next mm -hmm. for Zanskar? Uh, what's next for them is uh, what they told me is that they're working to develop their first projects. They hope to get their first geothermal plants online within the next three to four years. Uh, they told me they've already identified 
uh, a large number of spots and they're working with both utility companies and some potential customers like in the tech industry uh, to, to build plants where uh, the industry may be interested in co-locating data centers or other logistical operations uh, in a place where they have reliable 24-7 energy. Alex Knapp, per usual, thank you so much for your reporting. You're welcome back anytime. Great. Thank you, Brittany.